I'm Audra Bove, Superintendent of MSAD 60. MSAD 60 makes up the towns of Berwick, North Berwick, and Lebanon, for those of you who are newer to our area. I'm here to talk a little bit right now about our upcoming referendum vote on November 2nd. At that point in time, we have a building project going forward, and I'm going to just talk a little bit about the building project. It actually involves all three of the elementary schools uh, in Lebanon, in North Berwick, and in Berwick. Okay, so the Berwick um, building project encompasses the Hussey School, and we are proposing adding an addition to the Hussey School. We're proposing adding an addition to North Berwick Elementary School, and our biggest project is in Lebanon. Our, um, we are proposing to uh, build an addition onto the Hanson School, which would take out um, the Lebanon Elementary School. Lebanon Elementary School is about 67 years old. The average life expectancy or usability expectancy for a school is about 40 to 50 years and our Lebanon Elementary School has some significant structural issues. It is not ADA compliant. It has electricity, um, wiring, and different things that need to be upgraded and updated. So it's really reached its uh, life as a school. Our district has done a great job keeping up with it over the, over the course of time. But at this point, we really need to provide an equitable education for all of our students in all of our three towns and realize that um, the Lebanon Elementary School uh, is not able to do that at this time. When you go to the polls to vote on November 2nd, you'll see the question, which is question one. And that is authorizing the district to move ahead with the three building projects. And I wanted to just talk a little bit about some of the information that's circulating out there about those projects and give you uh, some further details. The first thing that I wanted to mention is that there has been some uh, question about the fact that there's a state-run or state-subsidized construction fund. And um, so some questions have been about why can't we just apply to the building funds to get this covered instead of having it come out of our taxpayer dollars. And that's a really complicated process, but I'm going to explain it uh, to summarize it. So in summary, schools, when the applications open for the state to um, move ahead with a building project, school districts apply for that process to begin. And it takes about a year to submit your application and another year for the state to visit the sites and make recommendations. And then from there, it could take anywhere up to another year before a selection occurs. When a selection occurs, um, then you move ahead in a similar manner that we will as far as um, starting all the paperwork and all the processes and all the design and the permits and all of that. Um, what I want to mention is that the total amount of funding that the state has available for building projects in the schools is $126 million. The last time that there was an application process open was 2016. At that point in time, there were 74 schools that applied for building projects, and the state was not able to fund even a, the top five of those projects. And what they look at is the most significant schools for that process. Uh, since 2016, the state has not reopened the application process, nor do we anticipate that it will open up the process in the next year or two. So while it sounds um, on, the, on the front side pretty easy to just sign up and begin that process at the state level, it really does take quite a bit of time that we don't necessarily have. Our building projects started several years ago with our building committee and our school board when they realized that um, driving through the towns, you can see that there's building occurring in every single town. And our schools are feeling a lot of that space issues. North Berwick Elementary School had 30 new students, so enrollment bounced up 30 students. And for a smaller school of 300, 30 students is a significant amount. 
If you're to walk through the North Berwick Elementary School at this point in time, you're going to see space and challenges. And while they've done a great job with those space concerns and challenges, we know based on what we see in, in all of the towns um, that building is occurring, that there's a lot of movement in and out of town, and those that are moving into town typically have children. Whereas in the past, a lot of the movement that occurred in and out of the towns often occurred with those who had already had children go through the school system and move out and come in, those that come in necessarily didn't have students in attendance. So while we have, as I talked about Lebanon Elementary with um, structural issues, we also have the space issues in the other two buildings. Hussey School is, is in a similar position. Right now there are um, to a modular out, at, there's a modular out at Hussey School to address some of the overflow for um, st student supports. And we are seeing a steady stream, again, in Berwick of the building and in Lebanon of, the, of building in the town. So we're certainly trying to address that on all three fronts. The other piece that's coming up for us in the next year or few years, depending on what happens at the government at the state level, is universal preschool. And we've talked about that on and off, but there's a bigger um, focus right now on bringing in the pre preschools to school. And if we need to do that in our current space, we don't have the space to offer preschool. And so we're, our plans take all that into account. So. We sent home a brochure that hopefully some of you have received already or will be receiving closer to the time when the referendum vote happens on November 2nd. Uh, in it, it goes through the three projects. And you can also check out, if you don't receive this, our school district webpage. It's RSU. 60.org and on that um, website when you go there that front page just has all of the slides of all of the schools and the potential projects. I do want to point out that in the brochure on the back page of the brochure lists the proje project funding, additional annual utility costs, additional annual operating and maintenance costs and the estimated tax impact um, for property and homeowners. So that's really important information for you to have. So I'm gonna read that because I just wanna make sure everybody is well, well aware of the impact to taxes. So this is, um, I'm going to read you some numbers and it's based on an assessed property of $100,000. So that will go up depending on your assessed value of your house. So the first year of this project, um, for fiscal 23 would be interest only, and this is for a 20 year bond. So how the bond would work is that in the beginning, the first few years, it's higher and it starts decreasing after that, um, that height, it starts going down. So the first year, if this passes, um, the tax impact to $100,000 as assessed house for North Berwick would be $40.68. For Berwick, it would be $59.11, and for Lebanon, it would be $53.69. The second year would be um, that interest amount plus a principal payment as well. And that principal payment, again, on a $100,000 assessed house, for North Berwick would be $117.26. For Berwick, it would be $170.37. And for Lebanon, it would be $154.74. We realize at our school district level, at our board level, at the building committee me meeting level, that this is a big ask from our communities. We understand how tight money is and we've tried to always be fiscally responsible. We've uh, really worked hard to keep our budgets where they need to be as low as possible while making growth in our class size in student safety, in health services, and uh, we would not put this forward if we did not feel that this was in the best interests of our students, not just for the next couple of years, but for several years out. Um, thank you.